Okay, welcome to this week's live. Aloha. I am Christine Hanks here with David Hall, owner of Seller Size. And you can see who's been to Hawaii. <laughs> I literally just got off the plane and drove here. <laughs> so I'm tired and I'm swollen oh. from flying and I even wore compression socks. So I would oh. hate to see what I would look like if I hadn't worn compression socks. So I'm super excited to get on yeah. my Seller Sizer and exercise tonight with you. We have, uh, we have a series of questions that came in today. I'm so grateful for everybody who participated in that. Hi, Sarah, thanks for joining us. Hi, Jenny, thanks for joining us. We're so glad you're with us. Does the lighting seem to be okay? Does the sound seem to be okay? I see a couple lights in the back there. Do you see those right above your head? Yeah. And just see, does that making it weird for people or can, is it, does it seem to be okay for everybody? Let us know if thumbs up. there's a thumbs up and what's going on so that we can um, make this beneficial for you as well. We're hoping that everybody has got their seller sizer out that wants to join us. I know Vitor said he joined and Sarah said she joined. And hi, Vitor. We're so glad you're with us. If you haven't had a chance to get your seller sizer out, run to it right now. <laughs> get go. it out and join us. We're going to do it in two different levels. So we're going to kind of talk about that really, really quick while we're getting a few people on. I'll be doing the very low end. So those that are beginners, follow me. And if you even need to do less than what I'm doing, do it. <laughs> Don't Good. push yourself so hard. And then Dave will be doing it on a little bit higher scale right. for those that have been seller sizing for years. Yes. And for those who have not been seller sizing, do not try to keep up with me when I do the run or the sprint. Seriously, it's, it's hard. Um, and we don't want to create stress, little stress fractures in the blood vessels or veins or, or overtax the heart. It takes time to build up to it. So go easy, um, but, but have fun. Remember, we're playing in, we're not working out, so. Right, hi Lynn, hi Janie, thanks for joining us. Um, if you wanna let us know where you're from, we love that as well. We'd like to see how many different places of people that seem to get up way early or in the middle of the night and join us or those That's that are right. just getting home from work that are here in the states we're going to go ahead and start with some questions are you okay with yeah that? let's do it okay last summer i had a major surgery for breast cancer which resulted in reconstruction of both of my breasts skin and muscle was removed from my back to facilitate this reconstruction also because of the breast cancer i was told to stop my hormone replacement therapy which i had been on for 20 years I had always felt that it kept me looking and feeling younger than my 73 years. I also became a raw vegan after being diagnosed. I went from 119 to 107 pounds. I have lost muscle tone and feel embarrassed to wear shorts or short sleeve tops. What can I do on my cellar sizer to build muscle in my arms, butt, and legs? Obviously, I'm not looking to lose weight, but would rather like to gain a little. So most of the focus here with this is, you know, helping us to tone ourselves and lose weight and to stay stable. But I can feel her. Yeah. That would be rough. Sure. So maybe some advice to her? Yeah. Watch our program, what we're going to be doing. What we want to do in order to, to create muscle tone and resistance is literally that, resistance movements. And that's what cellar size does. It's weight bearing to build up muscles, but it's also resistance when we do different movements or alter the angle of our body in different positions. We're going to work on some arm movements um, in just a few minutes. And we're going to work on the legs too. So the Jamba Run, the, the ski, the Whoopi Ski Patrol, um, all of those are really working on the muscles and the lower extremities in the legs as well. Okay. okay. So that will be good for her, and I'll just reference her if she happens to not be here to where to good. find out. Okay. Why am I not seeing a reduction in inches or weight when I'm regularly exercising 20 to 30 minutes per session at least five sessions a week? It makes me feel like I need to incorporate other exercise programs. Well, not necessarily ex other exercise programs are going to work. It's not cellular size as far as burning calories. We learned again from Dr. Arthur C. Guyton's book, Medical Physiology, or uh, Dr. Paul E. DeBoer, excuse me, in his um, research published in the Journal of Applied Physiology, that we can burn calories up to 11 times faster, five times, 11 times faster than walking, five times faster than running, and three times faster five times faster than swimming and three times faster than running. It's been a while. It's Monday, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> it's Monday. So, so as far as activities are concerned, I don't think you're going to find another activity that's necessarily going to be as, as good as cellar size. What we can do is change it up a little bit, though. We can 
do more resistance movements so that we're building more muscle mass. And by altering the angle of our body in different positions, we are focusing on larger muscle groups at the same time. So we have resistance for toning and we have weight bearing for building. So in, in as far as weight loss, increasing oxygen, doing the breathing techniques that we talked about, cells need oxygen to burn the calories, and then working the biggest muscles. I don't know of anything that I've ever seen or heard of that can help burn off weight as fast as the Jamba Run and repetitions of the Jamba Run because if you're doing the Jamba Run and you're doing repetitions of the Jamba Run, you have to be burning calories because these muscles are big and they need a lot of fuel. So we do the Jamba Run, we can do, and, and Christine is gonna go through a little bit of that too, do the gentle health bounce um, for a few moments while we catch our breath and increase oxygen again and um, blood flow back to the thighs and the buttocks. And then we do the Jamba Run again. And each time we're doing it, we're maintaining a high metabolic level plus we're demanding a lot of fuel so it has to burn it so if if you're not then the question would be and, and feel free to give me a call I'd like to know what you're doing in the routine because the Jamba run is is very intense um, running in place is also intense it has g-forces as well as using muscles so I was thinking maybe if they posted their routine you could yeah help them with that sure. okay. all righty this question came in and it was the sweet gal says, I am starving. Salatizing seems to keep increasing her appetite, and I tell her <laughs> I'm right there along with her. Um, and will my hunger decrease after my body gets accustomed to jumping every day? I've been jumping every day for about three weeks now, so she's just getting started. 20 minutes in the morning and 10 minutes in the evening, which is fantastic. Yes, it is. And I still notice increased hunger. Okay. So when is that going to end? Is when she has <laughs> subside. Your body right now, when, when you do an intense exercise, generally that helps to balance blood sugar levels and your appetite compared to what it would have been without the cellular sizing should actually um, level off more. So it's not as intense. If you are feeling more hungry, then just supplement the diet with some celery or some fruits and vegetables or not high cal caloric food, but roughage so that you can help continue to clean out the body. Your body may be demanding more fuel because the fat cells are saying, hey, I want to be fed. I'm depleted. Give me, and, and your body, the cells have memory. Your body has memory. It, it wants to reach what it feels is a natural equilibrium. And you're changing all of that. You're changing your blood chemistry. You're changing your metabolic processes. So there might be a little resistance initially but substitute that with, um, you know, my wife eats a lot of cucumbers. So substitute with something that's not, doesn't have a high caloric intake, but helps to satisfy the hunger while your body continues to balance itself out. Uh, our just this little gal, and I've heard of this, when you feel hungry, it's oftentimes you're dehydrated. Drink water. And so maybe she's not consuming enough water. That's very true. Okay. That's very true. Thank you, Irene, for putting that up there because I'm like, I remember hearing that. That's right. I did too. That too as well. And so, that's right. yeah, the live foods are great, but maybe if you're not getting enough water, that's what's causing some of those hunger pains. Yes. Drink more water. You'd say, well, I don't want the water weight. Don't worry about that. Drink the water. It's going to flush things out and the moving up and down on the solar size is going to flush the water out as well. I was working with a lady earlier this last week that um, was going on a detox and she had not been introduced to cellar size. So I got her on the cellar sizer and I had her start doing that. And she had end, um, ended up going to the bathroom four times before she ever had a glass of water. And because it was moving the water away out of the body and helping to detoxify. And we encouraged her, okay, go ahead and continue to clean or drink lots of water because it's working. Okay, okay. all right. Okay, spider veins. We've had a couple people um, post about spider veins that I've noticed. And uh, can this reverse the effects or can it just keep us from going forward? Yeah, the, the sp spider veins, when, when you have trapped blood proteins or poor circulation, especially in the lower extremities, the body's trying to find its way back up to the heart or the blood is. And so you get these little trap or pulls and, and spider veins that start to occur. Movement up and down makes it easier for the body to maintain and improve circulation. We have had accounts of spider veins diminishing. 
we have had accounts of spider veins actually increasing, but never getting worse. They, the movement up and down has, has helped to open up circulation. And as we open up the circulation, it makes it easier on the body. But if we have well-established spider veins or they're a little larger and we've been, had them for a long period of time, it may take time for those to reduce or you may have to have a little laser surgery on those. But the movement up and down is gonna help prevent the trapped blood proteins and the poor circulation from continuing. Okay, all righty. So do I to know about the app? Do I yeah. do a quick update? The quick update on the app. Yeah, I spoke with my webmaster today and he indicated that tomorrow, GoDaddy, who's doing our landing page, designing it for us, getting it implemented within our website, will have more information for us tomorrow. I spoke with my technicians Friday and I said, listen, I, I, enough is enough. I said, let's just launch it. And if we have to make changes or adaptations to it, we'll make changes or adaptations to it. We, people do that all the time in apps anyway. They agreed, and so our objective is to have this launched on Monday. Okay. We'll see. All right. Can you address the benefits of cellar sizing for an older person who has heart valve and lower back issues? Exercise has been approved by his car cardiologist, but the usual a walking affects his low back. And isn't that the one that yeah. you've mentioned laying on it and just kind of rocking too? But I believe I heard a previous testimony about a woman who improved in valve weakness by jumping and you did read that live. Yeah, there, there's, there's, sure, for the heart, that's true. For the lower back, walking on a hard surface will build up stress or tension in the back. And anybody's ever been to Disneyland? Oh my word. Yeah, you, you go for a few <laughs> hours and it's like, I'm here all day and, and you want to sit down because you're hitting concrete or asphalt. and that impact is being absorbed in, right in the back and the, the jarring effect. So cellar size does just the opposite. Cellar size helps to loosen up the lower back. So even walking on the cellar sizer, rocking side to side on the cellar sizer, twisting on the cellar sizer is gonna help to loosen up the lower back, increase circulation and you know, ultimately strength and flexibility. Okay, all righty. Okay, I thought this was, I, I see people ask on there, my cellar size is old. So this one was specifically, I bought my cellar sizer nine years ago. Is there any difference between that model and the current model? <laughs> Not in performance, no. They're gonna work just fine. The unit that I'm gonna be using tonight is my unit and it's 15 years old. And okay. so it's, um, and I use it, I travel with it. I let other people on it. Thousands of people have been on it. Um, works fine. It's nice and broken in. I like that. It takes a little while to break in a cellar sizer. And, and once you do, it's like a nice, warm, fuzzy slipper. You just, you want to hold on to it. So this one's broken in. It's what I use. And no, the performance is just great. Okay. I have two knots in my upper thigh from lunges. Very painful. Ooh. Will baby bouncing help or should I just let it rest? No, anytime we increase circulation to those areas, we can help reduce inflammation. That's good for promoting healing. Um, there are movements that we can do to, to help mitigate the issue or reduce the, uh, the symptom or the condition. And movement, gentle movement is, is helpful. You don't have to necessarily bend and walk in place or run, but just lifting the heels up and down. Remember that the tissue and the fascia um, and the muscles and the circulation, it's all gently being massaged through the movement up and down. It's very gentle, but also very effective. So. Okay. Okay, so we have one gal that just got her cellar sizer last Thursday. She's getting ready to get on a plane to come to Utah. Okay. <clears throat> um, and wants to bring it with her. It's heavy and she knows she can't lift it in, in the over bin. I doubt they would have allowed me to take mine in the overhead carrying. I actually checked mine when I went to Hawaii and checked it there and checked it coming back. And I know it was, there's a price <laughs> yeah. now to check your bags, but it was worth it to me. I don't know if I could sure. have lifted it, but sure, her question mm. is, how do I get it into that overhead bin on a plane? <laughs> we'll find the next strong guy. That's exactly right. <laughs> there will be lots of people that will help you. you and have them put it up there. That's it's right. the only way that she's going to be able to do that. They sure. allow her to take it in there. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. I just talked, talked to a gentleman today who had taken it in the overhead luggage bin. I generally just check mine on now too. It's just easier. 
many of the planes have smaller compartments, and you don't necessarily know until you get on the plane <laughs> whether it's going to fit anymore. So I just generally check it in, um, and it's fine. You know, mine's been, again, all over the world. Yeah, ours traveled and did just fine, um, yeah. going from several planes. Okay, uh, and another quick question. They just asked on hair resistance bands, and I'm going to ask you this question, too, on my behalf. Yeah. I want to do some more of this. Mm -hmm because I'd love to really get rid of my bat wings. Good. But it's really mm. hard for me because of this hand to put any weight against it mm -hmm. to do the resistance. If I had some resistance mm. bands, would I be fine? No, no, no I okay. don't think so. If, you, if you're noticing it just by doing this, you're gonna notice well, it doing this. But I can't really do it very well this way because right. if I put any pressure, I have to let go because of my hand. Mm -hmm. So. Well, the pressure would be on the rubber band, so. Right, but if I over. did rubber band, would I be okay? So I could alleviate, not have to use this hand to give any resistance to this one. So you know how I push against and this one's supposed to keep it from... Oh, for one arm you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, for, for one, one arm. arm. Mm -hmm. um, sure, if it works. It's, okay, yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. I just know lots of people have been asking yeah. about it as well. And yeah. Barbara was um, asking as well on here and so... I don't use well, resistance Mary, are bands. you going Alaskan? It looks like Mary may have gone Alaskan. Yeah, Alaskan, you can't fit them in yeah. the overhead. Yeah, they're too small. <laughs> okay. Um, I don't use any resistance bands. I don't okay. use any weights. Um, you're welcome to do it if, I mean, whatever motivates you is fine. Um, I do not suggest weights on a cellar right. sizer. Uh, I tried that a couple years ago myself just to test it because everybody was asking. And I probably went through several months of having to open up my um, scapula area and shoulders again because it, it, when you're jumping or running with weight, <laughs> you don't do that, number one. The G-forces on a two-pound weight or three-pound or five-pound, whatever, is not two or three pounds when you come down with it. And your ligaments and your tendons, uh, they're all, they all interact together. And I've talked to several other people who went through the same process, tried the same thing, ended up with the same results. So just my advice on that is use your own body weight, um, do your resistance movements. People ask me all the time, they say, how do you build up arms um, on a solar sizer? Just Hyperthyroidism, is it still safe? Well, again, it's a medical question. Right. I need to say, mm -hmm. ask your doctor or your health practitioner, but the movement up and down creates balance. You're working the entire endocrine system, not just the thyroid, not just you know, the adrenals, but everything. So generally, solar size increases an enormous amount of physical balance. <clears throat> we're seeing evidence that it can also help create chemical balance. And it changes, we know, blood chemistry. So when the body's functioning more efficiently, um, you want to watch it and see how it works. We have numerous people with diabetic conditions where they get on the solar sizer and they run free for several minutes and their blood sugar levels are normalized. So there's, there's a lot more we're discovering about it. Um, but again, if it's a medical condition, I have to say consult with your doctor, have your doctor give me a call, or share the DVD with the doctor, which is always a good idea because then often the doctor gets involved as well um, with cellar size and can, can help guide and direct what might be more appropriate for you. Okay, alrighty. So this gal <coughs> got her bar on um, and followed, or got, I got my bar on and followed the quite easy instructions. When I don't have a hand on it, though, it rattles and sounds loose and it's kind of making me crazy. Is there a way to make it more stable? Oh, sure. If you need to, I, we build it loose on purpose because, and I, I want to share this with everybody, if it was rigid, then you become dependent upon the bar for your balance and the rigidness of the, the, the bar. But if the bar is loose, you pull it toward you when you need it. And your balance gets better and better without your even knowing it. It's kind of like, and I've shared this many times, standing up on a fence post and walking across the railing. If you can reach out and grab a willow branch, even though it's moving, your balance improves dramatically. That's what the balance bar does. It just improves your balance dramatically to have it there so you can put more effort into your routine and get faster results. But if, you, if the rattling makes um, a difference, you can take one wrap of duct tape put it around the leg, both legs, and then slide the sleeve of the balance bar back over the legs with that one, um, just one, yeah, just one pass. One pass of the, the duct tape. Okay. And that'll quiet it right up and stiffen it up some. Okay, thank you. 
Would it be possible to ask Dave to explain which moves maximize g-force? Is it better to bounce high to get no. more acceleration and deceleration? <clears throat> also, what are the different health benefits on muscle building and weight loss of bouncing light and high versus pushing into the mat and lower bounce? And I think we're more of the pushing into the mat and the lower oh, bounce. Oh, sure, absolutely, because jumping high just means your body has more time to float. When it's floating, it's not working, it's not doing anything, it's just floating. And I tell people, if you want to float, go get a big trampoline. That's what they're for, floating. But you can do tricks on those. On the cellular sizer, it's not the height that really matters, it's the repetition. That's when the cells are expanding and contracting constantly. That's when the valves are opening and shutting. That's when you're sending the messages to the body to adapt. The fascia, the bones, everything is expanding and contracting with weight on it over 100 times a minute with most people. So it's not the height, it's, it's more the intensity or, or the repetitions. Now you can change the intensity by altering the angle of your body in different positions. And that's what we do so we can focus the effect on different areas of the body. But even while we're doing that, um, the rest of the body is still involved. I was speaking to a gentleman uh, earlier today. He used to have a bungee cord unit and he tried to do my exercises on it. He says, he couldn't do it. it. It was too sluggish. It was too slow. He couldn't get the intensity or the support. So they got a cellular sizer, and he was just telling me today how much they love it. In fact, they got another one um, because it's designed to support for exercise purposes. It's not sp supposed to be a trampoline where you jump high. That's what trampolines are for. And for those units that are advocating jumping high, um, they don't understand the benefits of cellular size and, and what, what you can get from it. Okay. Is, are there any special moves to lower blood pressure or, of course, are any movements helpful? Oh, well, yeah. Cellular size alone has been, in fact, Dr. Morton Walker talked about it in the Townsend Letter for Doctors many years ago, how it helps to lower high blood pressure and re um, reverse hardening of the arteries and lower elevated cholesterol and triglyceride levels, among many other things. But as you move up and down, you help back flush the valves and the pressure helps to open up the blood vessels and the veins in the body. So as we move up and down and we start to increase the flexibility again and, the, and improve the circulation, we get rid of the sticky blood cells by separating them and oxygenating them, then it's easier for the heart to move that circulation through the body. So it's, there's, there's several reasons why that has been beneficial. Okay, and this is our last one. Okay. I believe so. Okay. Um, how long will it take to get in shape, especially my hip, love handles, and abdomen, and how long to get that bulging out? <laughs> I think every person's different. That's right. <laughs> Thank you. See, every, there is no answer to that. It depends on your intensity, how often you do it, um, and, and how it works. If you do it more often, obviously your body's going to have a greater demand for burning fuel. Um, if you do it for a longer period of time, that's, you keep your metabolism up for a higher period of time as well. But, I, most of us don't have a lot of time. So if you do something very intense, you're increasing metabolism as well as you're burning fuel. Uh, if you do that enough, then your metabolism stays higher and over time you just start to lose more weight. Good. Okay. All right. So um, those are the questions that we have this week and I'm sure there'll be a few okay. more that'll trickle in and we'll make sure that they get answered. All right. So this week we're not targeting just one specific area like we have in the right. past few weeks, this week, we want people to get all their cellar sizers with us and actually do a routine. Good. And like I had mentioned earlier, we're going to be doing them at two different levels. And so you will be doing it more intense. Those that have been doing it for a very long time, you're free to, tr to keep up with Dave. For those of us beginning like me, keep with me. <laughs> I'll try to That's keep good. you as safe as I can. And if even what I'm doing tends to be too much, then I want you to slow it down. If you just health bounce until we get to the next move, that is good as well. So, That's anything right. Anything else you want to add? Just that you don't have to do it this hard. You can do this, just again, have fun on the cellular size or enjoy it. You don't have to push yourself real hard. You really shouldn't, you, you don't need to. Um, if once you get to a certain level, then yes, you can increase your intensity, but your body naturally will be able to do that. So. Okay. All right. People are hoping we have good socks on. I'm just going to be one of those barefoot mamas up here on, on the thing. And uh, <laughs> okay. you have some colorful socks on today. I hope you guys will be impressed with that. All right. Okay. Do we need to turn this back on right here? Oh, yeah. So let's turn that on. I'll let you get and, that. And we're going to bring the, the light we're up a little bit. We're going to time it so we make sure that we're staying in our... Okay. 
Before we get started, I'm going to be up here bouncing and um, really quick. And if you want to jump on your earth, we're going to just start out with our health bounce. The thing that we're, we're checking here is I have my microphone still connected to me. I'm going to take it off and hand it over here and um, see if you can, oh, he won't, they're going to kind of hold it in front of us. See if you can hear us or not because it'll be a little bit easier if we don't have to have our microphones. So I can't read the comments. He's going to watch for those. Am I still coming in or do you need me to put it back on so you can hear what's going on? Oh, sorry, lost the camera. <laughs> This is a moment of time where you start to see yourself not as you are, but as you want to become, whatever your fitness goals and objectives are. It's also the time where you can internalize your affirmations. So if you're dealing with family issues and you're moving up and down on the solar sizer, you can say, hey, Every day in every way, our family is getting better and better. We have more and more joy in our lives. My relationship is getting better and better with my children or with my, my spouse. And every day I see them as more and more beautiful. It doesn't matter whether you do or don't at this point. You're saying the affirmation and the proclamation, the declaration, so that it becomes internalized. And as it becomes internalized, and you, as you continue to do it, uh, your subconscious mind will start seeing ways to bring about the manifestation of what that is. Now in your physical and health, it's the same thing. If you're dealing with a health condition, you're not fighting against the illness when you're up on the subtle side. You're promoting health. And as you're promoting health, you're seeing yourself becoming healthier. So for example, if it's weight loss, you're seeing yourself losing weight. You're seeing your, and you're seeing the inches come off. If it's dealing with cancer or, or a, a health issue or weak lungs, you're seeing your body being filled with light in those areas of the body. You're literally communicating and talking to, to the areas of your body. Your lungs are clear, they're healthy, you're getting oxygen to the bloodstream, your mind is clear, you're increasing oxygen blood flow to your, to your brain and you can feel it. Your vision's improving, your balance is improving, your energy, the mitochondria within the cells are increasing. You're seeing that energy, uh, whatever the, the case may be, in your financial and career, you see yourself at work and you're performing better and, and you, you visualize that while you're moving up and down. So whatever your goals and objectives are in your family and home, your financial and your career, your physical and your health, your social and your cultural, your spiritual and your ethical, or your mental and your educational areas of your life, take some time, develop some declarations with regards to what your goals and objectives are, and then feed upon that while you're moving up and down. And that's, that's the gentle movement as you're increasing circulation, um, you're seeing yourself as being healthier, but use that time to connect with your body. So after the health bounce, twist. I need some light on this. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Okay, we're gonna twist and come catch up with us. I'm going to do this for about a minute. All right. So as, as we're, and Carrie, if you can just kind of place that every now and then when it darkens for some reason, that'd be helpful. Okay, then we do the twist movement. And the twist movement here, this is helping the lower, to loosen up the lower back. Very comfortable for most people. You don't have to twist or torque. It's just very gentle. If you want to work the upper back, you just take your elbows and kind of lift them up a little bit. So now you're working the scapula a little bit more, the shoulders and the upper back, and you can work your way all the way down. This movement here is helping to take the colon and the intestines and put them through a little washing machine effect to help improve digestion elimination processes. And of course, we're massaging 
the liver, kidney, spleen, gallbladder, pancreas, the adrenals, all those internal organs. So this is, a, I think it's the second most important physical activity we can do on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, we're ready to go and run. All right. So we're gonna go just slow for a count of 10, and then we're gonna go as fast as we can for 20. And I'm and gonna, gonna count go and see how many I can do in a minute. Okay. So. Okay, a little slower that one, 120, so you can compete with yourself. Okay, are you ready? Do you need yeah. another second? Okay. Yeah, I normally take about 20 to 30 seconds to get the oxygen back in the body. So people say, how can you do it in just 10 minutes a day? Well, <laughs> it's pretty intense. I wasn't doing it any nerves like you and I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, we're gonna do front kicks. All right, now leaning. you're gonna jog in place and tilt backwards a little yep. bit for everybody else. For 20 seconds. And I'm gonna kick my legs out in front to increase leverage. So, okay. ready? usually go to about a hundred. So um, we're gonna go ahead and stop, but if you want to keep going, keep going. That works the entire stomach wall from the inside out. By tilting the head back slightly, we're also working underneath the chin. Okay, now for the working on the love handle area. And doesn't this also work through your inner thighs? It does. But mainly the love handle. Right. It's going to be mostly, it's like, you see, dancers, they do things like this. It's lifting with these muscles. Well, all you're doing is resisting gravity. Nothing wrong with it. It's great. It really is. But what we're going to do is we're going to resist gravity and increase gravity. And we're not going to limit it just on these muscles. We're going to be working all of them. So it's just like this. Good. And again, this is 20, but I would generally go up to 100 for me. And when you're doing this, there's a couple ways of doing it. You can keep your back straight while you kick out side to side, or you can lean a little bit. And if you lean a little bit, you're gonna feel it even more. Having the, we call it the balance bar, we lost it. We're gonna change it 
to the, uh, that's all right. We're going to change it to the performance bar. There we go. Um, because what that does is it gives you the ability to put more effort into your routine so you get faster, more intense results. So now we're going to work on the back. And this is a new movement for me. Right. And so, so when you start off doing this, oh, you may be holding on to the balance bar and you think you're lifting from these muscles, but they're too weak. And so your legs coming up like this. That's okay. Okay. <laughs> just, Good. just, just do it like this if that's what you need to do to begin with. But eventually, you'll get a little. You know, you'll get stronger. You'll do more. Now, this one I also like to do the jumping jacks because I'm not landing on the springs. It helps with the shoulders. It helps with the lower back. And, you know, it's a lot easier to do. But don't do this if you're not comfortable with your backs. Don't start so there. That's, that's the back. Okay, we ready to sit and bounce? We could, but normally after I do the back, I do just a little bit of twisting again. Okay. So we can loosen up those muscles. And then we've got this sit and bounce. Yes. We'll probably have to move that camera down a little bit. Okay. When that's done, when you start off, support your back. You can put your hands right next to your hips. Can we hold the bar? Yeah, or you can hold the bar. Okay. I'm gonna hold the bar for those that are just gonna try this. It's a lot easier. Good. And then you'll go to the hands and then you go to without. There you go. Um, I suggest tightening your buttocks a little bit while you do it. And That's good. when you tighten and bounce up and down, as you become stronger, take away your hands, keep bouncing. It's all being done with the stomach muscles. As you continue to get stronger, one leg. That leverages the weight right in the lower abdomen where everybody wants to work. When the leg gets tired, lift up the other leg. Do that for a few moments until you get to the point no. where you can lift up both <laughs> legs and bounce a little higher. This is all being done right with the stomach muscles. When you get stronger still, now you can bounce cheek to cheek. Sounds good. Okay, now when you do this, um, you can start off just walking in place, just like this. And that's all we're going to do. That's first. a great exercise for those. This is a jumbo walk. For those who want to do the jumbo run, it's like this. Keep your back straight, your feet flat, you're pushing down into the mat, your feet are barely coming up. We'll do this for another 15 seconds. Good. That is easier to do with the balance bar, even for me, because it lets you sit back in the heels a little more and keep your back straight. Okay. So we then we do the health pass again. This movement, up and down, uh, pumps the calf muscle and feeds circulation back to the thighs. 
preparing you for your next set. Okay, so we're gonna do, let's do the ski patrol. Okay. And then we'll come back to the arm. So this one is for the hips, the thighs, the knees, and digestion elimination, lower back. Oh, actually it's for the entire back. There's two ways of doing this. Normally what I do to begin with is I'll do about 50 of what I call the whippy ski patrol. It's when one shoulder comes down while the other comes up and vice versa. As I'm doing that, I'm lifting my knee up, which is helping to move the hip. And that starts to loosen up the muscles in the lower back and the hip area. So, one leg crosses over, the other leg comes in front. It goes like this. If you notice any discomfiture, don't you don't have to work through it. Just, oh. just relax. I lost count. Okay, then from here, what I do is I do this is a ski patrol. It's a little more advanced. It keeps your feet together as you jump side to side. And I'll usually do a hundred of these. One, two, three. Or just like that. Thank you, Scary. And you can go faster. This is not everything that we're doing that I do in my 10 minute a day routine, I do, I've done. But we're adding additional movements for explanation. So we don't, because we didn't do all the other movements as well. Okay, now for the arms. Again, pulling up, I count to four, so I go one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, three, two, three. Four, two, four, five, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, six, two, three, and I usually take this up to twenty. So you'll start to feel the burn. Probably, I don't know. I usually do around 10. Eight, two, three, four. Eight, two, three, four. Nine, two. And you can really push down with your other hand as you're also pulling up. So you're working the tricep on my left arm here and the bicep on my right arm. 
That's about half of it. Okay, so we'll switch and we'll go to the other half. One, two. And what I have found is when you do the cellar size, when you get into it, that sitting you know, behind a desk all day long, it's not the healthiest. But when I do the cellar size, it's like I catch a second wind eventually. Everything opens up, circulation improves again, and I, I get still better, more energized, ready to go out. And, and have fun, enjoy, or be productive. I think it's five minutes. About eight. Really? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Okay. Well, I've kept going. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm kind of hoping everybody gets going. Okay. Now, one thing I didn't include. But people say, how do you get definition? This is how you get definition. You know, I have somebody, I'm not, I don't work hard. This works hard on me, but I don't, I don't spend a lot of time working um, on, a, on a cellar side. I play on it, I do my routine, and then after that, it's, um, I'm done, I'm done. Your body, your circulation, what you've done, to improve performance and reduce inflammation and increase the ability of the body to assimilate nutrients more efficiently through the movement up and down on the cellar size. They're opening up the lymphatic and circulatory systems. It's, there's nothing, I don't think there's anything like it in the world. I really don't. But if you want to work on certain areas, again, you can tilt backwards to leverage the weight on the stomach, tilt your head, works under the chin, Side to side for the waist and the hips. Out in the back for the back. Side to side for your hips, thighs, and knees. And one, and you hear my voice right now. <clears throat> if I try to clear my voice, it doesn't really clear. But this one here to open up bronchial tubes in the lungs, and you've seen me do it, but it's to stand here. Don't do too much of this. It'll make the lungs sensitive when you first begin and you can get a little dizzy, but it goes like this. And when I'm done, I don't know if you can hear the voice, if there's any difference or not, but it usually opens everything up. And, and that increase of diaphragmatic breathing increases more oxygen to the other one third of the lung. So the body functions and metabolic process will remain high. If you're getting ready to go to sleep at night, before you go to bed, do this for about two to, two to three minutes. Relax your shoulders, back, and buttocks. Just relax, and then go directly to bed. And uh, feel free to share some of your experiences with us. We'd love to hear it, hear about them. And I want to say thank you to everyone out there. Truly, you are making a difference in the lives of your family, of your friends, and you're helping to spread the word. And I'm hearing about it, and I will do what I can to encourage people to write in or to send me, uh, send us a little uh, video testimonial on your iPhone. You can send it to us through email. Um, call my office, I'll give you my cell phone. And you can send a little video to us so that we can continue to get the word out um, to, to many more people. It's making a huge difference in the lives of, of many, many of us. Okay, and remember to drink lots of water now that we're done. Yep. Drink lots of water. And How do you feel? I actually feel good. Yeah, good. <laughs> yeah, I do, and I, I'm sure it'll make a huge difference on the circulation in my legs. Yeah, yeah. Um, If you enjoyed this, let us know. We'd probably love to do this again and again. I didn't get to see those, but our tech person, my sweet husband, <laughs> is saying that there was a lot of thumbs up with that. So we'll okay. keep doing this, bringing in a little bit and, and yeah. sharing it with you. We love that you get on and bounce with us and it makes all the difference. It makes it good for us too. And we'll do less talking and do more movements in the future. But it's important <laughs> that people have an opportunity to go back to the beginning 
and, and understand. And understand how mm -hmm. to do it um, effectively and not to overdo it. Okay, we'll see Thank you, you and we'll see you next week, see you same next time. Week. Good, good. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, Carrie.